All right guys, so today we're gonna to be building a program that allows us to hide any image we want within another image. We're gonna build a whole thing using Python. Now, what's really cool about it is that it looks like any normal image, right? It looks like an image you could just have downloaded off the internet, so you don't know what's in there. But the cool thing is that within the actual pixel values of the image, there is another image hidden inside of it. So to the non-suspecting eye, it looks like just a normal image. So there's a few ways to go about achieving this program, but I thought, okay, let's just, let's just go based off what I think is gonna be the easiest way to achieve this. So in order to do that, there's a few things you have to know about before we actually begin the code. The first thing you have to know about is pixels. Now you might already know this, but images are composed of very, very tiny little squares called pixels. The higher resolution an image is, the more pixels there are. Pixels are made up of a single color and they're usually represented by the RGB colors, which basically just tells you how much red, green, or blue there is in each pixel. Now RGB colors work like this. There's a maximum that you can have for each channel, which is 255. All of them together as 255 make the color white. There's a minimum of zero and all of them together as zero makes the color black. Or you can have a mixture of these values, each value telling you how much red, green, and blue there is in each pixel. So now that you have a good understanding of what pixels are, or at least a basic understanding, let's talk about binary numbers. So all a binary number is, is a representation of a number. In this case, look at this number, we have 107. And below is a binary representation of this number. This being 1101011. Now the cool thing is that with high level languages like Python, we don't really have to worry about the conversions or anything like that because Python really does that on its own. We just have to worry about a few things. So first, let's have a look at the most significant bit. To explain to you how a most significant bit works, let's look at this number. This is 107. Now, if we were to change the first number here in the hundreds place to let's say one more, we will get the number 207. Now, as you can see, changing that one number by one made a significant change. We can apply the same concept to a binary number. In this example, let's change the leftmost bit, keeping in mind that a binary number only has a possible value of one and zero. So in this case, let's change it to zero. This gives us a number 43. As you can see, this change is very significant compared to the 107 we had before, hence the name most significant bit. Now, like the most significant bit, the least significant bit is really similar. We're just looking at the opposite end. Taking 107 again as an example, if we change the rightmost number, which is the ones place, by let's say a value of one again, we get the number 108. As you can see, 107 compared to 108 is not very significant. It's a very small change. We can apply the same thing to a binary number. Changing the rightmost number in this case from a one to a zero gives us a value of 106. Now again, compared to the 107 we had before, this change is very insignificant. In other words, it's very small. Hence the name, least significant bit. Now let's talk about shifting. In Python and many other languages, this is the left shift operator, and this is the right shift operator. For example, let's say we want to shift 107 to the right by two. Let's imagine an imaginary line to the right. Shifting the numbers gives us a value of 11010, which is the same as 26. Now let's look at the left shift. Let's say we want to shift 107 by two to the left. Again, putting an imaginary line, but this time to the left. Once we shift the values, because we left space at the end, we have to pad it with zeros in this case. Now doing that gives us a final value of 428. So right now you're probably thinking, what is this alien language that you're speaking about? You know, I can't, I can't even compute and I get it. I know it's a lot of information that I just threw at you, but it's really not too complicated. And even, even if you just understood half of that stuff that I said, even if you just understood a portion of it, that should be enough to kind of get you through what we're gonna do right now. Um, it's really not that complicated, other than that it's just that binary portion that you've never seen it. I know it's, it can be kind of daunting, uh, but now let's actually hop onto the computer and talk about the algorithm. All right, guys, let's start with this project. Um, you can use any code editor of your choice, right? There's VS Studio, there's whatever you want, but I'm gonna be using Vim because you know I'm cool like that. If you're not on Vim, you gotta get on it, bro. So anyways, let's get started here. Um, the first thing you have to do, uh, I'm gonna make a new directory here. I'm using Linux, but you could use anything. It's not platform independent. So um, let's call this Tegonography. So first of all, we're gonna be using the pill library to go ahead and do image processing. So you have to get that if you don't have it ready. The way you install that, you can use pip to install it. So in this case, pip3 install, if I can type, uh, and then the library is called pillow like that. So you can go ahead and install that if you haven't already. I have, so, and I misspelled install, like that. So you go ahead and install that. Um, it shouldn't take too long to do it. So as you can see, I already have it. So like I said before, we're gonna use that library to go ahead and do image processing. So let's start by importing that. So that's from pill, import an image. So we're gonna be using the, limit, the image part of it. So we're gonna start like any other program, right? We're gonna start with which is the main function here. 
there's a few things we're gonna do, right? We're gonna have to go ahead and be able to actually encode the image. Basically, meaning we're gonna have to be able to hide it. So let's just make those functions now. Okay, and look at that. Looking at that, I think that is all of the ones we need. One thing is I didn't notice I made a typo up here. Image geo. So we image. So in the main function, let's just clear some stuff. So we're gonna need images to actually use uh, for this thing. Uh, for me, I do have some images that I'll show you right now. This is gonna be the picture we're gonna use to actually encode into our image. Um, it's just because it's kind of cool, you know, like look at my cool airplane. I don't know. And it's hidden in there, you know? So that's that's that one. Um, and then we have peppers. So peppers is a picture of peppers, right? It's just like topic sponsor, it's just some peppers there. So we're gonna use a picture for peppers and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put the picture of airplanes within the picture of peppers. Okay, let's work on the encode function now. Okay, going up. Let's so just start putting some stuff in here. So let me explain a few things to you. This is a green value somewhere in the pixel of these images. The first one corresponds to that of the airplane and the other one to that of the pepper. Now, we already know that this is the most significant bit, which means that changing it will cause the most change to this number. On the other hand, this is the least significant bit, which means that if we were to change this value, the number wouldn't really change that much. What we want to do is we want to take as much information as possible from the first image, in this case, that being two bits, and store that information somewhere else. The question is, where do we store it? Well, since we already know that the least significant bit causes a really small change to a number, we could actually take these numbers and store them within the least significant bits of the other image. And the way we do this is using the shift operators we described earlier. This is the image we actually encoded, right? And then here on this opposite side, really that too. On this opposite side, we have the image, the original one, the peppers. So again, on the left, we have the encoded, encoded image, as you can see by the name down here, encoded image. And over here, we have the original image. Now, looking at them, I, I don't know about you guys, and I, I, to me, it looks exactly the same. Like, I don't, I don't see any differences. But again, there are different, right? Because we actually went ahead and changed the actual color values to make the other image become, like, hiding this image. So let me show you that real quick. And I want to show you these colors, right? So here we have the color values. These are the actual color values of what we're going to pick. If we pick this here, this red that we have here in the corner, look at that. We have a color value of red 40, green 0, and blue of 0 0.4. So this is telling us there's a lot of red, obviously, right? It looks red. There's a lot of red. There is no green at all in this pixel. And there's a very, very tiny bit of blue, right? So that's what that is. Now, if we then go ahead and use this same colors, right, the palette, and, but this time we click on the, here, the original image, look at this. You see that? They're different. So even though they look, honestly, they look exactly the same. Even though they look the same, they're not, right? This has a value of 39.6 red, which is a little bit less than the actual, than the red over here that we had before. It has no green, so that hasn't changed, but this one actually has no blue at all. So again, let me show you that here. If we click on this one over here, as you can see, it has red, right? This and very little blue. And over here, we have a look over here. We have a different red, uh, no green whatsoever, and no blue whatsoever, which tells us the color value actually changed. But it changed so little, like it's so very little change um, that we can't see the difference. And it looks exactly the same. So now let's actually work on the decoding part of the program. So now that we actually know how the image was encoded, decoding the image is actually really easy. All we have to do is take the least significant bits from the image we encoded and then shift them over to be the most significant bits. Now, since we took this image directly from the image we wanted to hide, the number actually ends up being really similar to the original one, and therefore we get our image back. So as you can see here, we have the images, right? We have the original airplane image here on the left, and then we have the decoded image here. Now, as you can see, it's a lot more grainy, right? There's a lot more grain. And the reason behind that again is because, remember, we took the uh, the most significant image, the most significant bits from the original image, and then just two of those were used to, to encode inside the image, right? So obviously when we decode it, when we get the image back, we have a loss of numbers. Like we, we only have the most significant bits. So because of that, obviously we have some loss of color here and there. But overall, this looks pretty damn good for something that was encoded, right? It was, we saw it, it was within that image. It was in there. Now it's uh, here. Now we have it back. So it's really cool. All right. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I know it, it might have been kind of daunting again, speaking of binary numbers and stuff, but it's really cool once you see this thing come to play, right? You could literally, you could, once you think about it, you could hide any image you want with another image and no one would ever suspect it unless they know how to decode it, right? So it kind of makes you think like, can you just imagine like how many 
pictures are out there on the internet that are really not what they're supposed to be like you know you, you might see for example you might go on instagram and see a bunch of pictures of people posting but those pictures might not actually be the pictures they seem to be it's just kind of something to think about